JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's Daily Market Review for November the 19th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued trading lower against the majority of the other G10 currencies on Wednesday during the Asian morning Thursday. It gained only versus uh, the euro, the pound and the Swiss franc while it was found virtually unchanged uh, versus uh, the Aussie. The greenback lost the most ground uh, against uh, NOC, yen and uh, kiwi. Now the weakening of the US dollar and the Swiss franc suggests uh, a risk on trading, however, the strengthening of the Japanese yen points otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, major EU indices were a sea of green, perhaps boosted by news that uh, Pfizer and BioNTech revealed a 95% success rate uh, at the conclusion of their latest COVID-19 vaccine trial, just a few days after Moderna announced a, simil a similar success rate. That uh, said, the joy did not last for long. US indices slid, losing on average 1.05% each, perhaps due to another day of accelerating infections from the pandemic. The negative investor morale uh, rolled over somewhat into the Asian session today as well. Although China Shanghai Composite is currently up 0.47%, uh, Japan's uh, Nikkei 225 and Hong Kong's Hang Seng are down uh, 036 and 0.48% respectively, while South Korea's KOSPI is virtually unchanged. It seems that uh, market participants are confused. They don't know where to place uh, more emphasis on, uh, on the positive vaccine headlines or on the acceleration of the infections from, uh, from the pandemic. As we noted several times in the recent past, the COVID era is not behind us yet and we may experience several more months of uh, rising infections and economic slowdown. However, the upbeat developments with regards to the vaccine suggest uh, that the end of this crisis is approaching. Therefore, we stick to our guns that any declines in uh, risk-linked assets are likely to stay limited. We would treat them as, a correct, as corrective moves within the broader uptrend, which we expect to eventually resume. Now back to the currencies, the US dollar uh, continued uh, to suffer even after markets switched to a risk-off uh, mode. It seems that uh, besides safe haven flows, there are more forces driving the greenback and one of them may be increasing expectations over fresh easing actions by the Fed at the December gathering. Yesterday, New York Fed President John Williams said that with no fiscal support, the economy could slow in the coming months, while Richmond Fed President Thomas Barking noted that uh, there may be one smaller targeted, st uh, targeted stimulus. Now, with uh, the US government and Congress Democrats not reaching consensus over a new fiscal aid, those comments may have added to the chances for the Fed taking action. Thus, with that in mind, the US dollar is likely to underperform the other safe havens, even during periods of market euphoria. In other words, we see the case for dollar yen and dollar uh, franc to trade lower in the short run. As uh, for today's events, uh, today an EU summit is scheduled to begin and it will be interesting to see whether the EU and the UK are getting closer in reaching consensus over a trade deal as early as uh, next week, as UK Chief Brexit negotiator uh, David Frost suggested. As for the data, we get the US initial jobless claims for last week, expectations over which are for a minor slide to 707,000 from 709,000. The Philly Fed Manufacturing Index for November and the existing home sales for October are also due to be released. 
Tonight, during the Asia Morning Friday, Japan's national CPIs for October are coming out. The headline rate is forecast to have slid to minus 0.3% year over year from 0%, while the core one is expected to have fallen to minus 0.7% year over year from minus 0.3%. Australia's preliminary retail sales for October are, are also due to be released and the forecast points to a 1.5% month-over-month decline following a 1.1% slide in September. We also have two speakers on today's agenda and those are ECB President Christine Lagarde and Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.